Today I'm going to try to solve a problem that many people have that, uh, if nothing else, is just good knowledge to have in your toolbox in case you may need it. Sometimes our phones die. Most of us have a phone, so if we really want to know what time it is, we can just look at our phone. Less and less people are carrying around a watch. And what if, for whatever reason, your watch dies? And you still may be thinking, well, I'm outdoors, I'm having fun, I'm hiking around, fishing, doing whatever. Why do I really need to keep track of the time? The biggest reason that I could come up with is if you are trekking away from a base camp or away from civilization, then knowing what time it is can help you get back safely before dark. Because if it is dark and you're trying to trek back, then you may end up using resources that you didn't necessarily need to have, such as food for the night, because we should always carry extra food for us when we go trekking, or batteries in case we're taking a flashlight or something like that. So keeping that in mind, it's just nice to be able to have this resource and get back to our camp or get back to civilization safely. Now, you definitely don't want to take a prized possession whenever you go camping. This is my grandfather's 1920s pocket watch. I would never take this out camping because if it does get damaged or broken then it would be devastating to me. You know, this is a family heirloom. I did take a very sentimental pocket watch to the 140th Gettysburg when I was or the 150th Gettysburg reenactment and it started raining and when I got home I found out that my pocket watch was damaged. And now it wasn't a very expensive pocket watch but it was a very sentimental pocket watch so I had to get it service to get it functioning again. So that's just something that you want to avoid. The camp craft writers of the early 20th century suggested that you take a watch. And at this time, watches weren't terribly expensive. You could buy a watch that were fairly inexpensive and it would keep time well enough for you to go outdoors. You know, you not, may not be able to set your watch to railroad time and be that precise, but it was good enough to get you by. Now, there's this other creation, this other invention that's actually been around for a long time, and that is the sundial and using standard time. Now, if you're out in the field, you could make yourself a sundial. It's really not super complicated, but you would have to keep it in one place forever as you make it because you can't move it around depending on where you move it to and the ground and height and everything. You know, it changes things. So that creates a problem for us who may be wanting to go out trekking. The Ansonia Clock Company actually created the Sunwatch. And they marketed this to not just the United States, but also to places like England and Canada. And it's really small, as you can see. It fits in the palm of my hand one way or the other. And it's very, very, very thin, really light, really isn't going to break my back if I take this along with me. And as long as I have sun, even 100 years old, this thing is still amazingly accurate. The Ansonia watch company was, or clock company, was founded in 1850. Now, before that, the company made brass. And then they joined up with some others, a very well-known clock company, to start making clocks. And it was mutually beneficial to both. The clock company got to get cheaper brass, and the brass company, and Sonia, well, they were able to break into a market that was really popular and it was really booming. And they were very successful for quite a while until 1929. In 1929, the company had to close because the stock market crashed. They sold out before the stock market crash, but the writing was on the wall well before then that they just weren't going to make it. But you know, the stock market was definitely the nail in the coffin to a lot of companies. Now, before I get too far, if you're interested in the history of the Ansonia Watch Company, I put not a very long history, but an abbreviated history on my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com. And on there, I have the historical write-up of this. I have the historical write-up of Ansonia Watch Company. I have close-up pictures that you may find beneficial in case you find one of these to add to your collection because it is really cool. Of course I have lots of books on there for free you should check that out and my store and any purchase made on that site helps us out. Don't get a whole lot of money you know there are affiliate links but it certainly is helpful.
So we appreciate it. All right, I'm not gonna show you how to use this out here. I'm gonna do a close up because it is super small. You wouldn't really be able to tell what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go up to a table and talk to you about that. Really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon because without them and their support, you know, we wanna be able to do what we can. So if that's something you're interested in, check out my Patreon page, Mr. Dyer's Musing. Anything that you can give is really appreciated. And I mean that. Okay, so what we can see here, so we're going to line up the north arrow of the compass with the arrow right above because of where I'm at in Ohio, I don't have to make any corrections. Now you'll notice that if you tilt it one way or the other, it's gonna throw off your time. So this really is just a rough calculation. As of filming this, it is at 7.05 p.m. So let's see how accurate this is. On this part, this tells you the cities, and then over here, it tells you the variation that you may have to add. Because of where I'm at in Ohio, I don't have to add or subtract anything, depending on where I'm at. Then the next line is your latitude. So this will tell you what latitude you're closest to if you're in that city. And then you have longitude, you have the corrections for minutes on that, and then you have the equation that you use based off of the date. So if it's closer to August, like what this is, then I need to add six. Because of where I'm at in Ohio, I need to subtract 24. So negative 24 plus six, that's equals minus 18. So in the end result of the equation, I need to subtract 18 minutes. Now, you'll see that this moves up and down, depending on where you're at. And there's a couple different, my wire's out of this, so I can take this out and hopefully you can see it. There's a little line on there. There's two of them on this side, and then one on that side. So this is 40 and this is 35 and 45. So we're gonna put that in there. We're going to angle that down back down to 40. Like so. We're going to find north again. Just like so. And we see from this shadow here that it's saying it's 6 o'clock. Now, but we still need to subtract 18 minutes. So you can tell that even 100 years ago that this is still fairly accurate, though we've moved positions. For close-up pictures, especially of this, you should definitely check out my website, like I said earlier. Um, I think you'll find it more useful being able to see those pictures and read how to use it. If you found this information useful, if you've liked it, please do me a favor and click like. That way other people find it and it helps them out as well. The next method of being able to tell the time on a sunny day is the finger and hand method. Now, if you've got hands, then you can do this. And it's pretty accurate to tell how much time is left in the day. It's not gonna be able to tell you per se if it's three o'clock, two o'clock, or something like that, unless you know exactly what time you started at. But, you know, th this is, works really well in case you do get caught up in something and you need to head back to camp. So to keep it in mind, if you stick out your hand, each finger is going to represent 15 minutes. You don't want to use your thumb because the thumb is larger than the other fingers, but it also curls up. So we're not going to use the thumb. We're only going to use our four primary fingers. How you do it is you set it in front of you and then you keep stacking hands. Now, if you notice, my pinky is right in front of my thumb. Okay, so that's going to total up to two hands. And then I can keep stacking up higher and higher and higher. Trying to make sure to keep my hands steady, not moving up and down. So locking your arm out right in front of you is certainly better than doing this because it can move. So locking your arm right in front of you, you want the bottom of your hand to be on the horizon and then you keep adding up until the finger touches the sun. You know, either it's gonna be the top of your hand or maybe the tip of your finger, something like that. 
that's when you stop. So if I stick my hand out and that's one hour, two hours, well, what if the sun is only there at the second finger? So that's gonna be a half hour. So that's two and a half hours I have before the sun is completely set. So I got plenty of time probably to get back to camp. The next method is using the stars. Now for that, we're gonna to go to the table and I'm gonna show you on paper how that works. If you can identify where the North Star is and the Big Dipper, this is pretty easy. Um, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it'll be pretty close. The next way to tell the time is at night. And so you need to know where the North Star is. To find the North Star, find the Big Dipper, like so, and there's two stars here. Now these two stars, if you draw an imaginary line as straight as you can, will lead you to the North Star. Now this North Star is going to be the center of your clock. So if we imagine the North Star being in the center, and that's going to be the clock, we have 12, 3, 6, 9, we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, and we have the Big Dipper there. As time moves, this is going to point to the number. This is going to be our hour hand. So this will tell us that it's 9 o'clock currently, or at least roughly 9 o'clock. So we just have to imagine that, and you're good to go. I hope this was useful to you. If it was useful, please click like. That way it does help others. And you definitely want to hit subscribe and the notification button because next week, not only am I going to show you how to use a particular artifact, but you're also going to learn a little bit about foraging. Here in Ohio, there's a lot of things that's edible right now. So next week's video is going to be a very delicious episode. So make sure to watch next Sunday. Now, if you like the skills stuff, then you wanna check out this video here because it teaches you a skill that you really like. If you want to see another really cool artifact from the 1920s, then check out this one. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss out to your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.